Forbes 30 for 30, 30 under 30. Congrats. It is I. It is I. It's a yeah. big deal. <laughs> it's me. It's me in the flesh. <laughs> big deal. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking on the way over, I was thinking about your career. Like, this is what I do. Mm -hmm. And it reminded me of this Common song, Common the Rapper. Yeah. And he said, Rat rappers and athletes be knowing my name. Oh, man. That's incredible. And he was talking about coming up. Yeah. And I just thought that was such a great line. Yeah. And that's your fame is kind of like that to me, oh, like man, where not. I'm guessing you could go to the mall yeah. and probably be low key. I don't, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, maybe yeah. not get stopped. Yeah, there'd be kids that'd come up. Would know, they? Yeah. Sometimes it's like a plus when I'm like out on a date and you know, it's like, Hey man, can I take a photo with you? I'm like, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> but if you were at, like a backstage at a cool concert or something, yeah, totally. that's where the cool kids would know who you are. LeBron absolutely. knows who you are. Aesop yeah. Rocky knows who you are. Yeah. All the rappers yeah. know who you are. And it's neat. It's kind of like you, we always want to be sitting at the cool kids yeah. table, yeah. whether you're in high school yeah. or whatever business you're in, you want to yeah. sit there and you've made it to that table. Yeah. How does it feel? Um, it feels as I know now that the money comes into other tables. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> um, yeah, so cool is, I think I put it like in, in a perspective of like when I was a kid in high school, I, I was in, I sat with the cool guys, but then we were the ones that wanted the stuff for free and all of that. You know, now I'm in this, in this business to where we want to remain afloat and I'm looking at it in a, in a financial standpoint. So then we want to reach all tables. Yeah. You know, so cool tables, every table. Yeah. You know, I guess every table is cool in their own every way. Every table is now cool. Yeah. yeah. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to break that like barrier to where it's like, everything is cool as long as it's just rude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, when you, I mean, take us back to the Philippines where you grew up, Absolutely. like the first I mean, from what I read, is the first kind of fashion inspiration came from your mom, I think, who was making school yeah. clothes. Is so, that the first yeah, so glimpse when, of it? When we were younger, we grew up in a very you know, wholesome kind of uh, upbringing. My father was um, in the States. He was working and providing. You know, what did he do? Uh, he, was in, he was an architect, so yeah. he was like working in um, Saudi Arabia and different places. And, um, you know, that to the conversion of the Philippine pesos is like so much. So then, you know, sending money back to the Philippines, we were definitely, uh, let's just say we were in like a better neighborhood than most kids. But also my mother was very keen on saving money. So then, you know, we'd have all these uniforms and you're at an age where you're growing up so was fast. Was it like a Catholic school where you had to it was wear? It very Catholic school. Yep. So then I grew up in a very uniform archetypal kind of um, I did it, the tie, the clip-on yeah, exactly. tie, and the clip -on slacks. Tie, which I find myself referencing a lot with when I'm designing. I'm kind of like in this... Um, Kids probably don't even know clip-on ties. Yeah, they don't know clip-on no. ties. They probably don't even know these... Uh, Might be a good thing. I, I used to have to wear my IDs with like this like string, and then we put beads. So then in school, the stature of like your cool was like how many beads you had <laughs> and all that. And um, Did you have the most beads? No, man. I actually was like... <laughs> I was actually kind of chubby when I was a kid, so, I, <laughs> so you know, let's just say I had one bead. <laughs> not saying that chubby's not cool, but you know, I had one bead to impress uh, the, the girls. So your so, but your mom was making these uniforms. Yeah, my at mother. Home? My mother made the uniforms. Was she at like home. a fa fashion conscious person? Um, was she into it? Uh, I, I would say yes. I would say she just had great taste, but she also knew that. Um, you can create all the stuff for very little. So, um, like she, fabric doesn't cost much. Fabric money. doesn't cost much. She knew how to make patterns and, um, yeah, she made incredible clothes and even costumes. Like I was an elf at a, <laughs> I was like legit the real life elf <laughs> in the movie. And, um, I was like bigger than most kids. So I was like a big elf. <laughs> so then when I watched the movie, I'm actually like, dang, that was me. But um, she made the whole uniform for me, and that was cool. But I watched everything, every process. And I didn't even know what her pattern was, and I already knew what it was when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So. And you said your dad had Gucci swag. Yeah, I have at photos a young of, age. So what do you mean by? I read that I was laughing. Yeah, like, what I the had, hell is Gucci I had, swag? I had photos of my father when he would wear like Gucci, like not even a merce, but it was like a clutch. <laughs> like he'd rock Gucci clutches. With, really? Like, yeah, he was like a Gucci loafer guy polo polo shirt tucked in 
And, you know, I look at him now because all he wants to wear is my stuff. And I'm like, what happened? Yeah. Like, you used to be so cool. Now you're trying to be cool. <laughs> you know, I was like, don't chase it by wearing our stuff. Just do what you do. Now, you said Pharrell and, how do you say it, Nigo? Nigo. Were, you, were your fashion inspirations. Yeah. And your dad, too. Like, I was my thinking, father, yes. what do they all have in common, if anything? Um, so I grew up in Winneka and San Fernando Valley. Um, well, hold on, back to Philippines. So you come over, you and your sister, when you were like 11? O- yeah, we came over. I was uh, By yourself? I was nine. Uh, I was with my mom. My mom and my sister and my mother, we both moved here. We didn't speak English. Um, oh, you yeah. didn't grow up speaking English? No, There's like no, no accent. No. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I, um, I uh, was in ESL. I remember I tested as like really bad with English, but then I answered the test perfect score. So then they're like, where do we place this kid? He's yeah. like... And, uh, he can't understand the teachers, but he he's smart as hell. He can't speak the language, but <laughs> yeah. he can understand the questions and, and, and do it. And I still remember it was like bubble in the questions. And I answered every question right, but I didn't know what bubble in was. Oh, like where you're filling yeah, you're the supposed circle? To fill in the circle. So what I did was Xing it. <laughs> I was Xing out all the right answers and I got a perfect score. And they called my parents and they were like, okay, so like, what's up with this kid? Like, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't get it. Yeah. yeah. And so they put me in ESL for a little bit. And then they're like, okay, this guy's excelling faster than anyone, so let's put him in honors. Okay. And then that, that's, that was like the beginning. And um, What was the culture like shift from, like when you were a kid in the Philippines, did you grow up with American hip hop? I didn't did even you know watch who Tupac movies? was, man. It was, oh, no Tupac way. was at his Tupac peak didn't his make his way to the Philippines? No, man, I was listening to NSYNC, Backstreet Boys. <laughs> um, Nothing wrong with Timberlake. Westlife, uh, West, West Life, which I just Who's found West out Life? is like Simon Cowell's like artist. <laughs> Damn, if I, I probably blew them up right now. Just kidding, no. West Life, and I remember like just Boys to Men and shit. Oh, hey, nothing wrong with Boys yeah, to Men, though. Yeah, that was it. Million hits. That was it. I mean, the Philippines is like, a heavy singing country. Okay. So karaoke yeah, and everything's karaoke. big. So Britney Spears, yeah, all that. So when you came here, yeah, I see your buddy on camera. Your yeah. buddy's laughing in yeah. the background at you. Yeah. Now, when you came here, you couldn't tell the kids at school like, "Hey, man, check out the new Britney no, Spears." No, let me joke. tell you something. First day of school, I wore Skechers. That's how far back I was from <laughs> Western culture. I wore Skechers platform. I was like, I don't care what shoes they yeah. are. They're just shoes. So get, I the, walked, get the step yeah, ups. I had a Spalding vest jacket that I told my father, just give me any jacket. I don't care. Yeah. And then I had these like zip, like you could take off the zipper yeah. cargos and then some Skechers. And then first day of school, I It's like that meme of, with the, it, when dad knows it's summertime where he takes his khakis, yeah, zip, unzips them and you got it. the shorts. And I remember this kid named Sammy was like the first kid that just made fun of my shoes. Sammy, wherever you are. Uh, now show Sammy what kind of shoes you're wearing now. Jeez, what do you got? No, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Sammy. <laughs> Fuck you, Sam. I'll, I'll make sure to tip you. <laughs> so what, like, what was, was your reaction? I mean, did you just get made fun of as a kid? Like, yeah, but did, you, did you immerse my, yourself in hip hop culture when yeah, you got here? Yeah, so my personality was always been like, how do I gauge into what is happening and how can I overcome like if I'm down how can I get back up yeah after I never took it as a loss I like when the kids made fun of me I was like okay I'll figure this out I'll figure this out and I came back with like the freshest Jordan yeah so I was like so what's up yeah and it's, it was, still wasn't enough so I was like so what's next yeah what's next I was never like bullied I was just like yeah. okay you guys want it it's all a game it's all a game yeah like, I'm gonna win the game and I'm gonna win the game I play to win mm-hmm. and um yeah I, I I figured that for me to be one of the cool guys, I needed to understand what the language was. Yeah. And, you know, at the time. And liter- literally, because you yeah. your English wasn't the, great. Yeah, literally. So. And then the style language, and, too. Yes, yeah, the style language, you know, the, the swag, all of it. And I actually coined it to Kobe Bryant, which is what do you mean? so weird. Because I, at the time I moved here, I, like, figured out basketball, and I loved it. Basketball's big in the yeah. Philippines, right? Yeah, and then I, wa- I would watch his... Um, pre-game interviews and after-game interviews, and I was like, damn, this guy could talk. Yeah. So I was like, I want to talk like him. So then I kept watching and watching, and, and through repetition, I, like, learned English and, and how to Thank act. you, Kobe. Yeah, Kobe, through, like, conversation. And I haven't even gotten a chance to work with him, but he wore my shirt. So. No way, did he really? Yeah, in Italy. How yeah. amazing is that? I don't know. I mean, what do you mean? The time, guy you used to watch time, when you first yeah, got here time, is now wearing your yeah, shit? at that time, yeah, for sure. For sure. I was like, whoa dang but you know again product reaches everyone yeah you know i was just yeah i was just in a who's the craziest person you saw wear your stuff like who was the one you go holy shit i made it 
was it, I don't know, LeBron or was it a certain rap uh, artist? Like, who was the one you go, holy shit, I'm here? Um, man, I, th I, I, I think I'm most proud of everyone. I think mm -hmm. everyone's got a crazy reach, but to me, like, Ellen stands for something beyond clothes and it's beyond, she's like the woman that wears function and clothes but also like not does, a lot of flash not a lot of flash but still like does f like a f you know philanthropy and just just incredible overall. mainstream superstar yeah so I, I think Ellen wearing our stuff was would be like a, a bar for me or um, yeah again LeBron LeBron is like <laughs> the voice of like kids like he's the, yeah. he's the ultimate goal from it coming from nothing to having everything yeah you know so that I and just, that's why your story is so interesting to me because you know you went from listening to britney spears i'm you're gonna yeah, kill yeah. me for saying this multiple times no, but you went yeah, from I listening to britney, britney spears, yeah. to lebron like the yeah. the pinnacle of yeah. the hip-hop sports culture mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wearing your stuff is pretty incredible you know yeah. when you were you know going back to when you're a kid you're figuring it all out style wise and stuff when did you decide, you know, hey, I really want to do fashion. I think I How had did it, you go from buying Jordans to like, I want to make a shirt? I think I had to figure it out when I moved to, to US and I had a cheetah highlights all over my head. <laughs> <laughs> I landed in the US and I had, I remember I was like, I want to come to the States with a statement. And I had, I, I remember I'd asked my mom to like take me to the salon and I had cheetah prints all over my head and I could probably find photos. But I think that you was- You had balls as a kid. Oh, I had balls. I yeah. was like, it's either, it's either. You You're know, either gonna get laughed out of the room, or yeah. they're gonna be like, this kid's all right. But at least it's memorable. Yeah. People you know? always say like, I'm a big Howard Stern fan, and he always mm -hmm. says, I want to get a reaction. Yeah. Good or bad, yeah. if somebody just goes, yeah, what the yeah. fuck, who cares? That's in, the worst. I think when someone's indifferent, you should be very, very afraid of yep. how you know you're affecting something. Yeah. You know? Rick Rubin but. said that too, the music producer. He yeah. was saying as a band or an artist, you want people to either really love you or, or really hate, hate you. Yeah. And either thing's okay. You know what's so cool? I, I, I like accidentally like sat with them at Soho. Who? Rick Rubin. I talked to him once. I ran him a coffee shop. Is he the coolest guy of all time? Yeah. And he's if you guys, still a lot wearing of your fans, the same damn slippers. He was a lot like, of your fans may not out. know who Rick Rubin yeah. is. An 18-year-old yeah, Rick, probably doesn't know yeah, who Rick, Rick is, Rubin so explain is, Rick Rubin. Rick Rubin is instrumental to Jay-Z, the whole entire sound of Co-founder of Def Jam Records with Russell. Jam, yeah, so he's just is kind of the godfather. It'd be if it was a he's like a Mount Rushmore face to what is happening now. Produced yeah. Jesus. I yeah, mean, he's still Jesus. relevant yeah. working with Kanye. He's incredible. Yeah. And did you get a chance to talk to him? Yeah, he was talking about the story about this kid that was taking photos of oh had this website for I think it was like the KanyeWest.com or something. Mm -hmm. And then it's it was Nate I believe that was taking the photos and then they just. That he was like, you know what? I just want to take photos of Ye for free, and then and he just told me that story, and I was like, oh shit. Yeah. And at this time, I was just like a young guy, just didn't really know what I was doing yet, mm -hmm. you know. So I was just around. And you put in the hustle too, so you're kind of into fashion sure. and stuff. For you sure. did a couple internships. Yeah. So I was. Um, you did one right after you graduated high school, right? Yeah, I was interning with um, Sean Sampson, which is um, the apprentice of Kim Jones. Oh wow. So. Um, uh, yeah, so Sean and I had shared a studio together, but through that, I actually learned how to design, like understanding, um, so were you making clothes at this time? And you worked yeah. with Tax Arnold too, right? Yeah, Taz Arnold. Taz Arnold. I, yeah, I made, I made, I was kind of like a street team kid for them. And I was really like, and I still remember like I would take the bus and the train. From the get, valley? Yeah, from the valley to get to them. And they would ask me like, are you, where were they, you where here? were they based? Downtown. Oh, okay. You know, they would just, whatever, whatever they needed something. And then I would just, I would, and I would never say that I. Getting paid no money. No money. Yeah. But I was like, I never, I never asked for anything. I was just like, I just wanted to Excited be a part to be there. of something. You know, and I think that's what everyone wants to be a part of. But now it's like the world's moving so fast. Everyone wants a dime for anything. Who's paying? You know? Who's paying? No one does anything for free yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah. And I think the liberty of being young is to be young. You don't need that. You, you need the experience and the knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's when I was like, you know, I, I'll take zero pay. So what did you do? So you graduate high school. You're not going to college. You go, I'm going to focus on fashion. Mm -hmm. Now, so you're running all over L.A. and yeah. on buses and stuff doing your t deal. But, like, how are you, how do you have walking around money? Like, how are you, do you have, like, a, oh, my are you delivering pizza give, and stuff? My father would give me, like, $5, $10 every day. And okay. I would, instead, I turned it into, like, a bank. I would give him credit. I'd be like, I don't want it today. I don't want it today. Yeah. 
but when it was time, yeah. I needed that. I had I making a withdrawal. Tally. I kept the tally. I tallied the dollars, and I was like, boom. And I would buy. I would go to Goodwill. I'd mm -hmm. buy like, you know, sometimes I'd find Versace. I'd find Marc Jacobs, etc. Then I'd sell it to all the wealthy kids in my school. Oh shit. And then you know the seven that I spent on Goodwill would now become two hundred. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in a way I was... So you were always hustling. You were, you were always yeah. entrepreneurial at a young age. It's in some way, I was like, I, you know, I, I, who's going to give it to me? You know, it's yeah. like, I, I'm not going to rely on my parents. I got to go get yeah, it. I got to go get it. So I figured there was like a... Kids liked what I was wearing. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's also a time I was selling fake babe. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got to yeah. pay the bills. What are you going to do? Yeah, I was like... So what I did was I, I bought <laughs> real babe. Yeah. And then I would buy the fake stuff. So then the kids wouldn't really know... If, if they were buying the real stuff, because the I'm one you just the, showed me looked legit. Yeah, I'm wearing right. the real stuff, so then you, he must be selling the fake stuff, <laughs> or the real stuff. So then the turnover on that was insane, because I was getting kids for like three hundred dollar hoodies that I was buying for like twenty. Where'd you get them downtown LA? In the, no man, I was work. ordering it. I was just oh, like no boom, shit. boom, 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 and then the supplier <laughs> got arrested fucked me, and I was like, damn, I'm, I, I, I can't provide it anymore. Yeah, the game switched to True Religion, Seven Jeans. <laughs> All of that. And I, let's not even start with that. You yeah. know what? That's a good point. We'll, we'll, why not talk about it now? Fashion is so crazy. Yeah. Um, it's true, true religion was the shit yeah. at, a, at a yeah. one time. Yeah. Remember Janko jeans, the but stupid you know, fucking But there's YG's? still a part in the world right now. Where which, they're cool. Where true religion is. Yeah, it's called, <laughs> it's called Oklahoma. Yeah, it's called Oklahoma. <laughs> Somebody's Oklahoma. rocking them right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> no, but yeah, it's, it's still a thing. I think true's, true's is actually... Are they coming still, back? I think it's the one surviving out of everyone. Yeah. You know, it's like they maintain that identity and they have like a still a fan base. Sure. You know, but let's be real. They're, no one gives a shit about true oh, religion yeah, anymore, yeah, but yeah, they were yeah. cool at one point. I think they sold for like 700, 750 million. Oh, did they really? Mistaken, the founder sold yeah, it? Yeah, I think so. Something Good for like him, that. man. Yeah, that's incredible. But like, how do you, and you look at certain brands too, like Coach. I mean, what do I know fashion, right? But I remember when I was in college, every girl wanted a Coach yeah. handbag. Yeah. But then... Everyone had a coach handbag, yeah. and then all of a sudden they have discount stores at yeah. the discount mall, yeah. and then no one wanted a coach yeah. bag. So how do you balance that? How do you not become a coach or a true religion in the fashion world? Well, it's, it comes into a position where what position do you want to take? Do you want to be the guy ahead of the, the field or the guy, again, this is the cool table or all the tables? Mm -hmm. you know? And I think when you reach to that stature of like a coach, you're becoming a three, three, three four or five billion dollar company. Mm -hmm. I think you got stockholders and yeah, quarterly I, I think numbers that report, hit. You know the numbers, and I think the business shifts to the 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 sales, the you know all the other stuff. Yeah. So um, finance guys are making your decisions. A lot yeah, of times. yeah, yeah. And then you know you can either be the guy that's like paving the way, but you know the numbers aren't exactly the same way. So you know right now we're still fortunate to where we're just pumping out new ideas and stuff. But, you know, uh, as we go, it's definitely the world. The road is going to split and we're going to have to decide whether we want this or that. Yeah. You know? So you started when you started your business, it was just you and you took on a partner later. Right. But yeah. did you set it up? Hey, I'm going to set up my LLC. Yeah. This, is more, this may be boring to a lot of people, but yeah. it's interesting to me. Like yeah. you set up the company yourself. You go, did you have a vision at the time or were you just like, I got to sell some shirts and get some money coming in? Boom. So I ba I'm like, <laughs> like you're, you got your LLC, you did your yeah. legal Zoom paperwork, you go, exactly. I got a bank account, now what? I think it's actually, this is like the first beginning of like a new era of how businesses ran. I think I, I just want to coin myself that I think I'm part of this like digital revolution of um, e-com and all of that. And I got it at the very cusp of it. Okay. When year are we talking now? It's like 2012 okay. that I was like selling just t-shirts and stuff okay. that I realized that you can, you don't need anyone else. You can communicate to the consumers right away. Yeah. And then I created this whole new business plan of like, um, I, I, I used my consumers to finance the project. How so? Like so, Kickstarters and stuff? No, no Kickstarters. So Kickstarter, what do you mean? So if you're starting a luxury brand, mm -hmm. Kickstarters is not the, the key to that. Okay. Because then it's, you're begging. Yeah. In some way. Yeah. You know, I think what you do is you create a product and then you allow the people that believe in it to pay for it. Yeah. And then you, you funnel the, the production. Now that's got to be scary as fuck, right? So you, yeah, you start mean, out and you go, I'm making a $100 t-shirt. Yeah. Go buy it. And then do you sit back and go, 
fuck, I hope somebody's actually going to spend. Is, is there doubt in your mind? Like, nobody's going to pay $100 for my stupid T-shirt. Fortune favors the brave. Yeah. I think. I think to stick to your guns and go, this is the price, yeah. that's it. I mean, I, I released my, my stuff. How much was it originally, your a, shirts? 150 <laughs> And then I, um, I, for like three months, I got uh, a total of one order. <laughs> and it was me. <laughs> no shit. Just needed the tra- like, I needed the. Is the, the website working? Let me, let me I make needed sure the I place it. I was like, I'll pay for it myself. Three months and you don't have a sale. Mm-hmm. So it was me. Every day, I mean, aren't you going, wow, maybe I should just do a 25% off sale nope. or maybe I should drop the price? Nope. Or, what gives you the confidence? Me, I mean, after two weeks, I'd start panicking. I, I don't. I think, every, I think all products are great for someone. Mm-hmm. I think this table is great for someone. I think, you know, all yeah, that, yeah. it's all about visibility. There's an ask for every seat. It's, yeah. It's, it's the visibility. So I was like, how do I get this visible for the right person mm-hmm. for what it is? Well, how'd you do it? How did you find those customers? I mean, I opened up my Rolodex of people that I gained through my internship, and mm-hmm. then I went to work. I was like, here, 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 boom, 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 seeded out some stuff, took a loss, and then I remember... What was the goal originally, to get stuff in stores? Is that when you have a luxury brand, is that the focus, or not any, to buy was, off my website? When I, don't I care. started, I wasn't even thinking of luxury. I was thinking of product, like what was in the marketplace that wasn't there. Okay. So I created the product, and then the product spoke for itself, and I caught it at the right timing. Was the first product like that Kendrick? We'll yeah, show it was like a, a bandana image here, shirt. The bandana shirt. Yeah, yeah, it was like, you know, it's and I'm trying to like break away from the stigma because it's like, yeah, we're so much ahead of that now. Of course, but like still, it's 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 kind of like the. But it's what broke you. It's what broke. It's me. the Jordan yeah, One. Yeah, it's the Jordan One, and I do remember like, um, my sister and I were like in like a ninety. 91 forerunner beat up forerunner forerunner yeah. and we were on fairfax we were driving and i look at my my um my paypal and it was up 120 150 grand 125 grand and i cried i was like what is this wait, 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 wait. when did in one day uh yeah one day Hold, yeah. so how did you go how far was it from I bought one shirt myself in three months to i got 150 grand in my paypal yeah how long was that Oh. Was that post Kendrick when he wore post? It was like shortly after, and I kept pumping and pumping and pumping, mm-hmm. and I divided it by colorways, and I kept so you, then you see the numbers go from one twenty, one fifty, drop down to seventy, go to fifty. Then that means you're studying that the pe- people's interest is you're losing interest. So then you got you have to think about it in a way where you this is the deciding factor now because mm-hmm. once there's a trickle down. That means you have to decide whether you're going to maintain that same strategy and like go up or take a risk and possibly take a full dip. Mm-hmm. So what I did was I concentrated all of the money into collecting a, uh, making a full collection. The collection never hit stores. In, what was I the think. goal and the vision at the time? Was it to have a full line? No, my goal was to get out of, um, to get out of a corner room that I was sleeping in with my sisters. Yeah. That's all I wanted. Making wanted, short-term goals. I wanted a real bed. Yeah. I was sleeping on a futon. I wanted a real bed. So you had 150 grand a couple months ago, yeah. and all of a sudden you're sleeping on a futon. I, I was sleeping on a futon. The still, whole time? The whole time. And then we bumped up to a three-bedroom, and I slept in that three-bedroom, and I was the greatest fucking joy of my life. <laughs> I have a room. Yeah. For the first time in my life. I could life, shut the door. I have a room. Yeah. I had a bed. I had a room. And it was great. But then I'm like, how do I turn this into something potentially global? Mm-hmm. And it's to take out those inner desires and really get right with the business. Mm-hmm. You know? I think a lot of times, you know, younger generations get ripped and stuff. And, but I think that's a lot of thing every, every generation misses, right, is you can have the long-term yeah. goal, right? I want to, now, I want to be an Instagram star. Yeah. Okay, cool. Everybody does. Man, I but you got to deliver pizzas today. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you so, got to pay the bill yeah, today. Yeah, I tell that to my cousins. You got to get off sometimes. the futons. Yeah, I'm like, yo, d- d- put the two points in. The three points will come. The yep. two points matter. Though. They add up. The two, the two points matter. Oh, man, this basketball analogy is coming in. Right. You, know? you got a higher percentage making a higher shot percentage. by the basket. Yeah, I play to win. Then shooting the three. I'm a percentage three. guy. I yeah. know what's Play the numbers. Yeah, play the numbers. Yep. You know? And, um, yes. And you see, we were saying, too, before we, we sat down, that you kind of look up to certain people. Like, it sounds like the vision is Ralph Lauren, where... Yep. I was cool 20 years ago. I'm going to be cool 10 yeah. years from now. And people, Ellen can wear my shirt. 
a 16 year old Latino kid could wear my mm -hmm. shirt. Anybody could wear my shirt and it's cool. Yeah, I, again, now I define like, I guess success or all of that within reach. How many people are able to reach and mm -hmm. how many people can you relate to? I think a good product is a product that, you know, a 16 year old kid could wear, yeah. but also like a, a grown man can wear. And Wait, how does a 16 year old kid afford $500 shorts? I don't know. These kids are doing it though. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I they're saved selling up, fake bait. Yeah, I saved. I saved up for my first Pharrell. Yeah, me too. My, my first Pharrell Bape T-shirt. Yeah. I remember I, I took the bus to Fred Siegel, and I was like, "Oh shoot, I forgot the bus costs money." So it took money. It took the the five dollars from my budget, and I was I was sitting there like, "Oh my god, I'm five dollars short." So then my boy's like, "Here, I'll, I'll give you five dollars back." And I remember I was so happy. But I'm thinking to myself, like, damn, I got to do better. Yeah. You know? But by, you know, like Studio 54 was the old big club in yeah. New York, right? And their whole thing was exclusivity. Yeah. And Groucho Marx had a great quote, too. He goes, yeah. I would never want to be a member of a club that would accept me as a member. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, you want to be exclusive. Mm -hmm. And in fashion, isn't that kind of cool to keep it small, kind of keep people away? Yeah. I, to create I started more of a demand? by saying no, no, no to everything. Yeah. Even when I was down. Even when I was negative. Yeah. Like, I, I remember I had, like, ten dollars in my bank account or something mm -hmm. and i was still saying no to people you got balls man. yeah because i was like you know what what this strong no is going to come to a better reward for me mm -hmm. you know so i was like I'll, I'll take the no now and then i'll do my little hustle for like 200 or something mm -hmm. but keep saying no and then the perception and, and you know it's like some things like we all want to be a part of something special. Yeah. And then when you get denied from something, you're like, what, what do you mean? I can't, yeah. I can't get it. Yeah. You just, it's, it's like when the girl rejects you, you want her more. It's like, what? Mm -hmm. I'm going to what? She said, mm -hmm. no, how mm -hmm. dare she? Well, now I'm like, you're just stupid. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. No. But, but eventually don't you have to say yes? If you want to grow yeah. your company, you got to yeah. kind of let some well, more people timing. in the club. Timing. Timing. You have to feel the pulse of the culture. Like, how do you balance that? Well, you have to feel the pulse of the culture. Mm -hmm. See where it's. It's an intuitive thing. It's an intuitive thing. I think you under you have to understand who's moving the culture. Yeah. Or you know, moving the the pace of what's cool and what's not. Who are and those then, people now? Because what do I know? I'm a forty year old white now, bald guy. Now I think. <laughs> like, who is moving the culture now? Now I think it's us. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's you, us. You, Virgil, guys like that. Yeah. I, or I I don't think it's dictated by cool anymore it's dictated by needs what do you mean needs i think so much product is out mm -hmm. and it's all about like what you it's like we're all trying to sell the same shit it's a t-shirt it's a t-shirt at yeah. the end of the day but it's, it's a hoodie like, it's a whatever it's it's deeper than that it's the need it's the it's the connection it's the personal connection and how who are they buying into you know it's really a it's really are they buying you or are they buying the brand or are they buying both? everything they're buying everything. the whole thing everything it's a lifestyle it's yeah a, it's a persona it's a ideology it's you know all of it it's like when you wear a certain thing it's like why do we purchase this because we feel so good with it yeah you know the minute you can have a bad day but you put on your favorite t-shirt you're like you know what it's not that bad it's funny there's another good meme i'll put it up here mm -hmm. where it shows like a guy wearing a t-shirt long sleeve yeah. t-shirt with uh, a regular t-shirt on top yeah and it said if you wore this in the 90s that meant you made you like music yeah you like you know yeah, what I mean? but you could yeah. spot that guy and go oh he's like mm -hmm. in the rock music yeah. whatever or like this new airpod mean what's it, <laughs> which like one's that airpods on <laughs> what is that airpods on poor people's opinion out it's like something <laughs> like that i was like oh my god yeah. it's hilarious yeah. but um yeah product speaks to everyone you know who's inspiring you now who do you look who do you kind of look up to and um is it, is it kid street style could it be a kid skateboard in venice or what uh, virgil's up to or, or my, both? my friends mm -hmm. um i think my friends are very instrumental to what is like back to what's cool for us i think yeah. again like my friend friends. michael lockley and i like and, and and you know all the other friends that we have i think we talk about like what when all this is said and done like what's going to maintain mm -hmm. you know and it's again it's what we need in our wardrobe you know what we need in our closet yeah and then i want to be the guy that makes that so to me cool is dictated by heritage and like 
Something that's um, going to last. Something that's going to last. Like and craftsmanship, you don't want to be true religion. craftsmanship and heritage. And it's not so much defined by a person. Mm -hmm. I think it's more so like a, a feeling and a, and a story to tell. Yep. You know, so now, now I'm more inspired of like, how can we translate this, our love for, for mechanics in F1 to the kids, you know? Yeah. Or like, how can I... Apple design, how does Apple, that... How, how, what is the Apple design of clothes, you know? It's, yeah. It's, it's essentialism, I think. Is and it's deep. also like, like for women, it's a black dress, right? Yeah. If they have the right black dress, that they'll wear that two years ago and they'll yeah. wear that 10 years yeah. from now, yeah. it'll still look good at a party. But also still be like, I need a new black dress. Oh yeah, you don't want yeah. to, yeah, you yeah. still want to yeah. buy a product. I think, I think the customer return percentage point. is very, very important That's to this. That's a good you know? point. One cell is not as strong as a consecutive. How do you track consecutive. that? You we figure it out. You got you got to figure it out. Yeah. yeah. We figure it out. Yep. Yeah. We're still figuring out the strategy to it. But yeah. Yeah. Build a cult following yep. and add to it. You know, start to speak to a whole different demographic. Has Supreme done that better than anyone? I mean, to me, I'm not involved I in street I culture. Think, but. I think they're the best at engaging at every youth culture, every turnover of century. Yeah. Or every turnover of. That, that kid today wants Supreme and the kid five years there's ago so wanted Supreme. There's 12 year olds every fucking year. Yeah. You know, there's 12 year olds, 13 year olds every year. And those are the kids that's buying this It's stuff. funny. I saw a dude at the airport, 50 year old guy wearing a Supreme hoodie. Yeah, that's crazy. And I was like, that kind of doesn't look, that's not a good yeah. look for him. But, but his, his son's still, probably like, his yeah, son, yeah, that. Told, yeah, You know, dad buy a Supreme but, hoodie. But that to me is like, Supreme is like the new, is like a, like a, a Ralph of our time, or like a McDonald's of our time. Yep. You know, it's like how... But different than McDonald's, no, because there's a McDonald's in every corner and it's affordable meals for everybody. Yeah, Supreme, yeah, ain't, Supreme like that. ain't like that. Supreme's okay. going, Very we're true. only selling 200 fries well, as today. Far, as far it. as like the brand kind of... Like recognition. Recognition, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like you could replace the American flag with, I think, like a polo logo yeah. and it'd be still recognizable as American. That Supreme logo has been it's on American, everything from... American. Well, I don't know if that could be a th situation, but it's still a thing, you yeah. know, for kids. It's just like, how do we break the barrier and become more than just like a cool niche brand? Yeah. And how do we become a global kind of essential? Got to project life in a perspective of like, what can't be taken away from me? And it's, it's, um, values it's um building things that last building things that last it's family it's um knowledge you know it's yeah all of that oh yeah. what else you promoting what do you got coming up um, got new lines got any new partnerships going uh I'm supposed to do i'm gonna focus more on the furniture and art next next year i think Very cool. um do you have any collabs coming with uh, certain brands you, um, can you talk about it or not are you going to do your own line of... Well, Madison is telling me I can't talk about it, so no, I yeah. can't talk about it. Your manager's freaking <laughs> yeah, out over yeah. there, yeah. Um, and I, um, and um, Formula One. Okay. A whole lot of focus in Formula One. Shout out to Lewis uh, Hamilton. Shout out to on Lewis Hamilton. Win. Yes, yes, yes. And um, yeah, and then eyewear. I think we're, we're just going to expand the wardrobe of what the rude guy is wearing and maybe what he's dating. Very cool. Yeah. Stay tuned, guys. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for sitting down, man. It was a pleasure. Oh, man, talking pleasure. biz. Thank you. Thank talking you. Talking fashion. You. Thanks, yes, guys. Sir. Yes, sir. Perfect. That's it. How to look, guys.